Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to dip the yarn into the dye baths. Now, a couple things to remember when you're doing this. Because you're putting yarn in dry, that means you're not pulling it out of a mordant soak or any kind of a scouring soak. You're just adding it right in there. What I like to do just to really make sure that that dye takes to um, the yarn really well is I will do kind of a scouring soak, which is essentially just water, a little bit of um, kind of a grease, a degreasing uh, solution like Synthropol and some citric acid. And then I let that yarn dry overnight and then I add it to my soaks. Um, that's one way that you can do it. Another thing you can do is you can just double up the amount of acid that you put in the dye bath and that will work the same way. So it's really kind of up to you depending on what you're planning on doing with the yarn when it's in the dye bath um, in terms of how much acid you want in the actual dye bath itself. But those are a couple of options that you have. Um, I am going to go ahead and add my yarn to the bath. I'm going to go ahead and just let it sink into the dye and absorb and I think it's going to look really great. The gray that I have here is a really nice, I mean, you're not going to really be able to see it here, but it's a really nice warm gray. You might even be able to see the cast of the water has kind of a purpley cast to it and that's perfect. That's just what we're looking for. When I did the paper towel test, it came out with a really nice it's not really showing up very well in the camera, but it came up with a real, this is prior to adding it to the rest of the water in the dye bath, and this is right now. So it's a little less concentrated right now. <laughs> tell it's going to be a nice warm gray color so really excited about that I'm letting that um, submerge into the water. I have an idea for how I want to accomplish this really pretty icy blue color that we see happening down here. It has really, you know, it has the cast of teal um, under that icy blue that I'm seeing there. And so I happen to have a dye stock um, that I've been kind of holding on to for the last few weeks that was left over from. Um, some yarn that I was dyeing for a special order not long ago. And I think that it could be really good for creating that icy blue color with that teal kind of undertone to it. You can't really make out here kind of what it looks like. Maybe if I give it a spin, you can kind of see. Um, let me see if I can do the paper towel test for you just so you can kind of see what this is looking like. So here is that color so this has a lot more teal in it than the blue but I'm thinking if I were to dilute this down and add some blue to the dye I may be able to get this icy blue that I'm looking for here um, I hope so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot with a little a small batch of this and see if I can't um, add some blue to this to kind of get to that color that we're looking for over there Okay, we're getting closer. So, a couple things I did just here, if you were paying attention, I um, added a little bit of blue to that dye stock that I had that was already kind of a teal color. 
it just was a little bright for me. I felt like I this was probably really close um, to what I, you know, was kind of hoping for, but even that was still a little brighter than I wanted. I feel like the color here has a little bit more of a dusty gray tone to it, so I went ahead and I added some gray. Now, if you ever have a color that's just too bright for your liking, try gray. It's amazing what that can do. That's actually, on um, you know, when you think about color theory, what gray does is it tones things down. So if something is just so bright, if you add a little bit of gray, it'll tone it down. So that's what I did. And what I'm finding is that my color right now that I have is a really pretty, I'm gonna mix it up just a little bit more. It's a really pretty blue gray color. Um, like that. So that's kind of the new color that we have. And quite honestly, if I get you closer, I think that's pretty spot on. And so I'm super excited about that. Um, I think this with the gray base coat that we have on there plus the light space that's left over for us i think we're going to have a really cool um, combination and we're really going to be able to bring out that awesome icy gray dusty blue that we see in the photo so when you're wearing bobby pins in your hair and you have this like mask going on up and down it just gets it's like a hot mess up here so i pardon pardon me if my hair starts sticking out in random places Okay, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and figure out how we're gonna add this dye stock to that dye bath on top of the yarn that we have. Let's go ahead and look at what we have over here so far after the yarn was dry dipped and has been soaking. Okay, so here we have our yarn that has been soaking in the dye bath. It's it kind of absorbed that dye gradually as it sank down into the water, and I'm really, really happy with what I'm seeing here. There's a nice gray cast, and if I were to pull up a piece or a skein of the yarn and turn it over, you can see it's much deeper on the other side. And just to kind of give you an idea of what we're going for here, we're going for that really cool brick wall in the background or, you know, stone wall that we have in the background and you can see by looking at this that we've pretty much got a great um, kind of rendition of that so I'm really happy about that so that is on the bottom side on the top side we're left with a really nice light layer of yarn over here to add our really pretty blue color so we can check it out um, each of the baths of course there's slight variations but again we have the same kind of effect going on if I were to flip over this skein of yarn you can see it's much darker on the back and underneath which is exactly what I want when I do a dry dip like that and then over here as well looking really good now this is what I'm thinking okay I don't want to flip this over I um, I kind of like what I'm left with here and if I were to flip this over I would be mostly looking at that darker gray side and I don't want to work on that side I want to retain the gray of that side. I want to maintain it just like it is. I want to focus on adding color to the light side of the yarn because that's where we're going to pull out that really pretty icy blue. So I'm going to leave this just like it is in the pans and I'm going to do my color work, not to be confused with color work, I'm going to do my work with color on this side of the yarn and then we're going to see what we have at that point. So right now we just have to decide do we want to add this blue color to this whole side of the yarn? Do we want to add it to part of the yarn and then leave some of the yarn bare? Because in our photo we also have this white wig going on here. We have the white face and of course the yarn isn't white um, like it is in this photo but again it's kind of that, um, I wouldn't really call it negative space but it's just that white space that we want to keep on the yarn. So we have that to keep in mind. So it's going to be good if we have a little bit of white space left over to do some speckling, maybe some black speckles as well, and then use the rest of the white space to pull out this blue. And then after I kind of figure out what we're going to do with that blue, I wanted to talk a little bit more about that deep teal that we see in that bodice right there. Okay, so all of that, next steps, let's figure out what we're going to do with this blue dye stock. <laughs> 